Hey YouTube, it's Emily Gardner, and today we're going to be making an awesome spicy herb rubbed potato. And it's super good and it's super quick. Uh, it's going to be great for kids, great for parties, and I guarantee you're going to like it. So I'm going to show you guys the ingredients you're going to need and kind of how to make it. So I'll be right back. Alright, so what you're going to need for this dish is, obviously you're going to need some fresh potatoes. You can either get these from the garden or uh, like if you're in my case, I am in between um, rotations, so my potatoes aren't yet ready yet, and we already ate the ones we already harvested. So I just chose to get these from the store. However, I, are, I am growing some. These are just a russet potato. Now you don't want to skin them because the skin is what holds the potato wedge together. And it also adds a really unique texture that just, um, it allows the flavors just to really burst. And I obviously go with the russet because it's a medium starch to make, uh, potato. It doesn't have, uh, a whole lot of starch to make it uh, turn soft and mushy. However, it has just enough starch to, you know, kind of hold it together, um, give it a, kind of a good flavor, good texture, um, and uh, and overall, it's probably one of the better uh, potatoes for cooking. Next ingredient, obviously, salt. I chose Montreal steak seasoning. It's got a great just a grilling flavor. It's fun for summer. Uh, however, it's not necessary. This was just added to me uh, to kind of spice up my own recipe, kind of make it different from some of the other herb rubbed potato wedges. Then also another ingredient that I added myself was some chili powder. This adds a really great kick to it. Adds a little fun and a festive flavor. Um, it goes great with burgers, steak, uh, chicken. It really is just an all around awesome dish. Next, I'm just going to use some crushed pepper. There's some whole peppercorns in here, and then obviously it just has the grind. Uh, this is a must-have if you're going to add a really fun flavor, because regular just pre-ground pepper just does not have that fun kick. Another thing you're going to need is rosemary. It's a very prime um, uh, herb in this dish. It's important to have just because um, it is, it's one of the biggest flavors that really kicks hard right in the beginning and it's, it's fantastic. And so at all, if you try this, this is a must have. Um, and I grew this, I grew this in my garden. So that's fresh dried uh, rosemary. Next is oregano. This is just some dried oregano leaves. I do not have any in my garden, but obviously you can grow it. So it is possible. Another thing that you're going to need is Worcestershire sauce and extra virgin olive oil and or just olive oil really uh, you know and in worst case scenario you can also use some vegetable oil but I prefer olive oil because it adds just a way better golden brown crisp also you're gonna need a large bag large ziploc baggie and a really good quality knife now the knife obviously uh, I'm not getting paid I'm not, now, I'm not advertising this, but this is a good cook knife. It's well balanced and it's the right size for pretty much anything you're going to need. Um, this is not really necessary in this thing, but I just thought I'd point out a really good quality knife. If you're looking for a decent knife, I do a lot of cooking, and man, if you don't have the right knife, the jobs just seem to be so much harder. But this, I mean, it has enough weight that you can just, you can dice vegetables with, with ease. It's great, it's easily sharpened, and it's probably one of my most favorite knives, knives to be using um, for any dish, really. So just a quick tip, if you guys are looking for a good knife, a good cook knife, um, and uh, I believe this is a 11 inch knife, um, but don't hold me to that. You can check it out on your own, or I'll add an annotation if I find out later. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut your potatoes in half. This is... Uh, going to really make your job a whole lot easier and it's also going to um, just make a lot more sense later on. Now obviously be careful if you're a kid watching this, have your parents help you uh, and um, you just really want to be careful because losing a finger is never uh, a fun thing and I've cut myself several times. Okay so I have all my pieces cut in half. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is flip it over on its side. Also make sure that there's no bad spots. Those sometimes occur, especially in garden grown potatoes. And you're just going to want to, you're gonna to want to place the knife on about a 45 degree angle. 
and if I can make this easy for you guys to see here, you're gonna make basically like an apple slice. And you want that to be a wedge, obviously. It's going to be very desirable, and it's also going to hold its shape well when cooked, and it's going to just get that fun, picnic-y, summer feel. It's also great in the winter too, but I love this dish in the summer. It's just really fun. So then, you know, you just keep doing that, and some slices will be bigger than others, it's not one of those dishes where you have to be super precise. But as you can see, from each half, I get about four slices. And that should be about the number that you're getting. Um, I mean, it, you can do it thicker, but just note that the cooking time will be a little bit different for those people that um, choose to do it thicker. Uh, mine are about um, anywhere from a quarter inch to half an inch um, at their thickest point. So it's not, uh, it's not an overly thick wedge, but, um, but it is going to vary, but it, don't, it doesn't have to be rocket science. It's just a really fun meal. So just dice those up really quick. So simply all I've done is just pile these on a plate. And what I'm about to show you is probably one of the simplest steps ever, but it's really one of the steps that makes these the best just potato wedges you will ever taste in your entire life. They are so, so simple to mess up and yet so simple to make. Um, and one of the things that I think people really fail to do is to zap them in the microwave. Five minutes on high, you really don't have to worry too much about uh, timing as long as it's anywhere between five minutes and five minutes and 30 seconds. You really can't overcook them. You just don't want to undercook them and you don't want to cook them too much. Because uh, if you cook them too much, they're going to get soft and you can't um, and you can't make them manageable for, for marinating. And if they're undercooked, they're going to be really, really soft and not crispy. And you can, um, and you can really ruin the flavor that way. So five minutes on high, I'll get back with you guys. All right, so I actually just figured that I'd kill two birds with one stone here. And while the potatoes are in the microwave, I'm actually going to show you guys how to make the marinade. Now, I could have just put it right in the bag, but it makes it a lot easier for me to show you guys, and you guys kind of get a feel for the amounts here. So, what I'm gonna do for the amount of potatoes that I did, I had, I think, seven medium-sized potatoes. You're gonna want six tablespoons of the extra virgin olive oil. And, I may have just put seven in, but it's really not, again, like it's not rocket science. You can mix and match your different herbs that you like. You don't even have to follow these, but I'm showing you the way I do it. And really, it's, uh, it's just a fun and festive food here. So then now I'm gonna put in about half a tablespoon of Worcester sauce. And then you're also gonna want about a quarter of a tablespoon. Next, you're gonna want some crushed pepper here. I really just do this to my liking. Um, make sure the pepper crusher works here. I usually have a little bit more because it's important that you never under season your potatoes. If you under season your potatoes, it's not gonna be a fun, it's not gonna be a fun flavor and you're gonna taste, it's just gonna be really bland. So I make sure to put a lot of stuff in here, a lot of flavor. You really can't mess it up at all. Um, again, now, this is a touchy part with salt. Everybody knows that uh, over-salting something can be really displeasurable. Uh, and also, you know, uh, under-salting something can be extremely displeasurable. So I usually put in a good couple pinches. Um, you know, anywhere from uh, probably about a quarter of a, quarter of a tablespoon to about a half a tablespoon. And that's just gonna make sure that you get a real good salty potato wedge and, and it's gonna go well with pretty much everything. Next, you're gonna add about a rough tablespoon of rosemary. Um, I'm gonna actually go to the, the pour here. And again, you can't totally mess up this dish. It's extremely simple. And, uh, and it's one of those things where you can really improvise. 
Um, just kind of getting your guys' brain juices going. Maybe you guys want to uh, mix it up a little bit, or maybe you guys want to follow the exact same recipe. It's totally cool by me. Um, then you're going to want about a half a teaspoon or a half a tablespoon of oregano. And those are your two main herbs. Those are going to be the ones that you taste the most and are really going to give that awesome kick. The other ones are pretty subtle, so you can do without them, but I love them in there. Next is the Montreal Steak Seasoning. This is super fun for pretty much any, any steak or any burger. It's a real good compliment. And I put about a quarter of a tablespoon in there. Really nothing too overwhelming. And then with the chili powder, you want a good couple shakes. I typically put in about six, but um, you know that is obviously variable as well. So that's really the only thing you have to remember with that. Also, if you see that it's too thick, you can always add more extra virgin olive oil because anything you don't use will just remain in the bag. This is just coating the potato wedges, and uh, and so it's not a total um, exact recipe here. So it looks like my potatoes are done, and that's about the consistency you want. You don't want it to be super thick or super herby, but you don't want uh, too much of anything in there. You want it to be a pretty good consistency. So by now, your potato wedges should be hot and fluffy, and they should also be steaming. Be careful when putting them in the bag because they will be hot, and I am not liable if you get burned because, ouch, they are definitely hot. Um, but you want them hot because when they're hot, it's going to be able to absorb all that flavor from the from the um, ouch, from the marinade and you know an oven mitt would be nice but I'm just gonna toss these babies in here and when I get down to a few I'll just probably pour them in but right now I'm just uh, just tossing these in the bag and also as a tip if you don't grab them by the by the actual flesh if you grab them by the skin or the edges it's not too bad and so I'm just gonna toss these in here and uh, I'm gonna try to pour these in here now. Okay, that was a really bad idea. Don't pour them in. Just, just uh, take the uh, take the long road and just put them in. It'll save you more time in the end, and probably actually save you making a mess. Next, we're gonna take the marinade that we just made, and we're just going to pour it in this bag. Now, I found that it's actually a lot easier to prepare it in the bag, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to. Uh, I'm going to make it, I made it in this bowl so I can show you guys, and I'm just going to scoop it in. But, for you guys, just make it in the bag and it'll save some time and also save dirtying some dishes. Now here comes the point where you have to decide whether you want to add more or little of something. It's just kind of an eye game. You're going to toss these around and, and just uh, make sure you get a really good coating because this is gonna tell you if you need to add more of something or if you're ready to go. And, and that is, uh, that's one of those things that you just have to kind of tell by experience what you're gonna need more of. And I'll show you in a second. Okay, so as you can see, I'm gonna turn my light off really quick so you can see what I'm talking about. As you can see, uh, the potatoes don't totally look coated, like super coated, as you can see. They don't have a whole lot of coating. I'm gonna turn my light back on so you guys can see, because our light, our house has very poor lighting. But, I mean, they're coated, so if you're not one for a whole ton of flavor and you want something kind of subtle, this is gonna be good, but I love a whole lot of flavor. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna just take a little bit more rosemary and this is going back to what I was saying, that it's not, uh, it's not an exact recipe. As long as you get the coating that you like, it's going to be fine. Uh, it's it's kind of just one of those things where you got to toss in stuff till you see the consistency that you like here. And that looks good from what I just threw in there. I'm going to mix that up one more time. And this is the fun part. Okay, so for the next step, it's really simple. You're just gonna take a pan, 
Now for easy cleanup, I'd recommend putting some aluminum foil down, but in this case, uh, they're gonna be pretty uh, greased up. You shouldn't have a problem as long as you remember not to burn them. If you burn them, you're gonna have a terrible time cleaning this pan. But like I said, if you don't wanna risk it, just lay down some aluminum foil. In my case, I know about the cooking time it's gonna take, so I don't ever worry about it. But for the first time, definitely, maybe use some, use some protection. Uh, now I'm just using some, some spray on, uh, cooking spray here. This is just gonna prevent any sticking at all just in case something goes wrong and I'm out, but that is good. All right, okay, so I have a really thin coating of the cooking spray, which is not gonna taint the flavor at all. It's also optional. I choose to use it because I like to make sure that nothing's gonna stick with the pan. As you can see there, I've taken my, pre my oven and I've preheated it to 450 degrees. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're just gonna take your pan, Throw it right in the oven. You're gonna to wanna to leave your, your pan in the oven for about five minutes. And that's about as long as it's gonna to take to let the marinade soak into the potatoes. And when that's all said and done, then we're gonna be able to cook them and we get to move on to the next step. All right, so it's been five minutes and we're gonna take our pan out of the oven. Watch out, this is gonna be very hot because it has the, the hot cooking, the nonstick cooking spray, spray down here. And the key to having everything hot, you wanna keep everything hot as possible because when you throw them on that pan, you hopefully you can hear them sizzling. They are just cooking away right away and that's gonna seal in that flavor and also it's gonna make the fluffy inside that you made, you want them to be on their side. You don't want them uh, to be on their backs and I'll show you what I mean. So as I'm laying these out here, I don't want them to be on their backs like that. It's gonna steam them and they're gonna get really soft. And you don't want soft, you want them to kind of fry on their backs here. And if you don't have enough room, you know, it's never, uh, it's never a problem to just either grab another pan really quick and make some uh, kind of quick ones, or you can always leave them and uh, and prep another pan too, because as long as they're warm, they're gonna stay fluffy. And I typically don't even worry about it. I just shove them all on this pan. They don't have to be all touching exactly on their face. As long as they're facing down, uh, the, uh, the skin, when the other ones shrink, the skin's gonna touch. And that's really the biggest thing, is that some of the skin touches. You don't want, you don't want the outer you don't want the outer skin to be laying on its back. You want the, uh, the inner side of the potato wedge to be, on the, to be on the metal there. And I'm just gonna shove these in their spots there. All right, so it's been 15 minutes, and as you can see, they are not yet, uh, they're still oily, but uh, they're beginning to brown and you just wanna flip them, make sure they're not sticking, just rotate them. Now that they've actually uh, had their, their one side uh, cooked, you can, you can just you know, flip them. They don't, have to be, they don't have to be perfect on their side. You know? they're, they're already sealed and their, their crispiness has already been ensured, basically. So you don't have to worry about that. Now that I've Flip them and made sure they're all good. I'm just gonna give them a quick shake, get them all down on their kind of their own level so they're not stacked up at least. That you don't want still. I'm gonna put them back in the oven for another 15 minutes. Still we're at 450 degrees. And I'm gonna put those in for 15 minutes. And I'll check back with you guys when they're done. Alright, so the next 15 minute segment is up. I'm gonna pull these out of here. And man, if I can just express to you guys how fantastic it smells. It is just, I've never smelled something so aromatic. And they haven't stuck to the bottom of the pan whatsoever. They're sizzling away, they're nice and hot. Uh, they don't have any oily slime to them. They're completely browned and, and uh, 
and they're ready to go. So if I show you guys kind of what they look like here, uh, it's also you know a great uh, tip to tell you guys: put them on a white plate because there's nothing more uh, visibly appealing than you know the brown with the green herbs. Um, you know that that golden brown color against a white plate. It just really complements extremely well. And while you don't have to pile them on like this, um, I'm just showing you guys that uh, it's a definite um, it's a definite showstopper, and it's so easy to make. Had I not you know been making this for a video, it probably would have taken me in total no more than 35 minutes because uh, it takes about 30 minutes to cook. And really, once you get down to it. You can, you can do the whole thing in about five, well, maybe 40 minutes total. So it's really not a rocket science. It's a super easy meal, super fun. And you know, if you're doing this thing for like a, a nice meal, you could put like a garnish right here or something, just some cool herb that makes it look really cool. Maybe a sprig of rosemary or something, or maybe tuck some basil leaves, or maybe take some uh, curly, some curly kale and put it underneath there even. So just some cool ideas. And also, this can be eaten plain, or you can you can add some uh, fun dips. You guys can have some uh, ketchup or barbecue sauce. Even works really great. Uh, just anything. So I'm glad you guys like this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed something. Hopefully, you guys learned, and hopefully, you guys definitely enjoyed this super quick, simple meal on how to make some herb rubbed potato wedges. And hopefully, you guys remember to grow big or go home. And I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Bye.